Hi, I'm Marge Charmley. Welcome to Buy Cities, a program by, for, and about the Buy Plus community and our friends and allies. Thank you very much for joining us. Today, we are at the annual Because Conference. We're on location at the Because Conference in uh, the west side of St. Paul. And the Because Conference, if you're not familiar with it, is a program, a regional program for the Buy community and our allies and friends. And they are now in their 30th year. So they just had their 30th anniversary, been doing this since 1992. And Buy Cities has finished 20 years of filming. And we are very pleased that recently, in the last couple months, we are now in uh, all of our episodes that we've ever filmed, over 300, are now in the Gene Treader collection at the University of Minnesota Archives, which you can have access to it, and we will provide a link to. So, having said that, I am always feeling very fortunate to be able to meet wonderful people in the BiPlus community, and today is no exception. The person that you are about to meet is Aon Ray, 15-year-old pansexual person who is going to talk about growing up in different parts of Minnesota, going to small schools, and what it was like to come out as a pansexual person. So, Aon, thank you for being at Vice Cities, and welcome to Vice Cities. Hey, Jay. I'm really glad to be here. I've gone to three schools where I was openly pan because... I only knew I was pan for those three schools. Before then, I was in elementary school, and, like, I knew it existed, but yeah, yeah. I couldn't understand it. I didn't feel attraction to people, so it wasn't relevant. Uh -huh. I was also blind at those schools. I didn't notice anything. Okay. So, um, but my three schools that I've gone to, my three small schools that I've gone to in chronological order are Ogilvy, um, Mora and uh, Cass Lake Mena High School, which is where I am right now. Um, and all within the state of Minnesota. All within the state of Minnesota, okay. yes. Um, and Ogilvy was my first school where I realized I was pan. Mm -hmm. um, and it was also my first time realizing people didn't like me. Really? Yeah, I was actually pretty bullied in my other schools um, okay. because... I was just weird. I was, I've always been the weirdo um, for one reason or another. But at Ogilvy, I finally noticed it mm. and was finally affected by it. Oh, boy. Um, and actually, in reference to my name, people started calling me Ewan. Ewan? Yep. As in ew. Gross. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Um, I never hated my name. I still don't. Mm -hmm. I love my name. But I became ashamed of it gives the wrong feeling because I never actually was ashamed of my name. Mm -hmm. It's almost like I was ashamed of telling people my name. And I actually started going by the nickname E specifically so um, the, the school wasn't just students were toxic. The uh, administrators were pretty toxic as well. Really? And uh, they wouldn't get kids, kids in trouble for calling me that because, well, it's a hard name. You can't fault them for that. It's a hard name. That's what they said. So what did the kids say or do? That was uh, it's it's hard to remember exactly just because of my how my memory works. Sure. But um, in Ogilvy in particular, where it was actually really bad, uh, they just found anything they could. Uh, they didn't actually use um, like typical uh, anti queer terms, like uh, at least not against me. They would call like my brother's tranny, oh, okay. um, and other things like that because. Trans people are awful, of course. Yes, yeah. They don't deserve respect or yeah, yeah. human decency. Um, but they didn't really use any of that for me. Um, they found everything else to mock. Uh, they would mock me for my body because I was a very early bloomer. Okay. Um, and they would um, mock me for my behavior, behavior that really wasn't actually that out of the ordinary. What was it? Um, saying hello like honestly just i walk into a room and i'm like hi enter friend name here oh boy somehow that was bad um uh, they would mock me for my friend group 
because there was a small clique of about like five people, most of which are queer, um, who were the bully kids. Mm-hmm. They were the outcasts. Got picked on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they would, um, when I joined basketball as like a coping mechanism, they mm-hmm. would they would never pass me ball. Um, they would never really let me practice. So I never really got any good. I had, like, I'm not physically inept. I could have been a good ga- basketball player. Yeah. But they wouldn't let me, so I never was. And the coach didn't intervene. Mm-mm. Not the... um, and they would, they would even mock me for things like cutting, even when I didn't cut. I mean, I actually started to after a while, yeah. but, like, they would mock me for things I didn't do. Um, they would mock me for picking my nose when they did it, too. Oh, boy. Um, and it got to a point where I, my self-defense mechanism, my way to handle it, probably wasn't the smartest, but it was how I handled it, which was that I embraced it and I enhanced it. Oh, okay. Like, I was mocked for being loud and unashamed, so I became louder and more unashamed. Like, um, even when people were teasing me in the hallways, I would, like, charge at them like a rhino. Yes. Um, and they'd run away, and they'd call me crazy and weird. But they were calling me crazy and weird, and I only started yeah, doing yeah. that uh-huh. because I was sick of call- them calling me crazy and weird. Yeah, and now that I've chased you away, you run down the hallway, and you haven't come back. Was so, there any yeah. part of you that kind of got the giggles about that? It was the only way I could tolerate it. Yeah. I had to laugh about it. Yeah. Like, there was, there was nothing else. Yeah. And the thing is, is, um, so, so, you know how you can be, like, mentally susceptible to, um, certain mental conditions like anxiety and depression? Mm -hmm. Um, none of my friends were actually those people. They weren't actually people who were genetically more likely to get depression or anxiety. Yet all of them had it. Okay. Because of the people at, at school. Okay. So for being bullied and being queer. Yeah. Okay. And I won't I won't say my specific friend's name because mm-hmm. I don't actually have consent from him. But I have a friend. Uh he's a demi boy mm-hmm. and he didn't know that until he left. Even like even though he like hung out with me a lot and I was like very openly everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um he never realized who he was until he had the chance to get out of the fight or flight. And he's, he's got like, he's all jumpy and skittery and shy. And like, he, he's that kind of person who's always got the like closed body oh, language. Okay, like, yeah. And some of it is just because of that's who they are. Yeah. And a lot more of it is because of how that school damaged him. So here you are. How did you come to, Think about yourself as being pan. I mean, people use different words to describe themselves. Why did um, that fit for you? When I, started, you? when I started feeling attraction, I just started feeling attraction. And I was like, huh, well, I've been involved in the uh, generally queer community for forever because of my mom. Okay. Um, who am I attracted to? Okay. And I, I like, spent maybe all of an hour thinking about <laughs> a long time. Who am I attracted? I don't know. It's, it's all of them. It's all of them. What's the term for that? Oh, pansexual. That means all of them. All right. I'm pansexual then. Okay. There we go. And I've never really questioned it since. Really? So you were battered emotionally by these people. How did you get through that and what happened next? Oh, I got through it by uh, denying it, okay. pretending I was fine. Okay. By lying to everyone essentially um I got through it by exaggerating myself um I got through it by focusing more on the people that mattered like that friend I mentioned um by reminding myself over and over and over that my mother loves me my brothers love me my family supports me they are okay with this they know it's okay and I know it's okay and I am not I like i stubbornly told myself that I refused to bend to them. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was probably just because of who I am as a person. But, like, I told myself 
I refused to bend them and I refused to show them they got to me and they still did. I actually have a fun out of an in-school suspension story that I didn't deserve, but I don't actually want to get into that. Um, like I just hit it. I pretended it didn't matter. I pretended I was okay with it and ha <laughs> you think I'm weird? I am weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll show you that. Yeah. And I dealt with it afterwards. Um when I transferred schools the next year because so fifth grade was bad and sixth grade was hell. Okay. And after sixth grade, my parents were like, yeah, we're not keeping you guys in there. Okay. They took you so up. So we didn't even actually move. We okay. just transferred to Mora because it was right there. Okay. And then that was when I went to Mora. And Mora was a considerably healthy school. Like, healthier. I don't know if it was the best. Mm -hmm. um, but it was good. It what was, was good about it? What happened? It just wasn't awful. It's not even that it was actually like an active school or a very horribly, wonderfully queer supportive school. It's uh -huh. just, it wasn't awful. It wasn't as toxic as the other. Um, the thing with Mora is because of my experience in Ogilvy, even though my like true self, my personality isn't the quiet kid, I became the quiet kid. I forced oh. myself to be the quiet kid out of fear of the same thing happening again. Okay. Um, but it didn't. Mm. And there was this, this club that my brother actually had to remind me of called United. Okay. And I completely forgot about it. And I am 100% certain the reason I forgot about it was because I moved. And I was so upset about moving that I intentionally left behind everything good. Oh. Yeah. And so that was the good stuff at Mora then? United was amazing, and since my brother reminded me of it, I've been slowly, like, grabbing more pieces of what happened then. Mm -hmm. But United was an after-school club. I even remember, like, the room we uh, hung out in, um, and the teacher wasn't one of those weird teachers that won't, will yell at you when you sit on the desk. So I would just, like, sit on the desks, and I mm -hmm. would chat with people who I regret to say I don't even remember their faces. Mm -hmm. Um because I tried to push away the good parts. Oh. Um, but I, it was a fun place to talk. And like, one of the things I remembered was, I don't even remember what the movie was called, but um, one time we watched a movie about a gay guy. Mm -hmm. and he was there being gay. Mm -hmm. And the movie was about him coming out and um, finding out that the guy he had a crush on, yay, he's also gay. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. And obviously some parts of that, of the movie weren't realistic because it's a drama. But it was but shown like, in school. But it was shown in school. Okay. Um, it was a it was a very nice after school activity. Um, I don't remember what night of the week they held it, but it was like one, one night a week. Mm -hmm. um, and I would go to that instead of going to the library after school. Um, which is what I normally did, waiting for my mom to be done with work so she can pick us up because mm -hmm. she refused to put us back on the buses. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, hell on wheels, so to speak. <laughs> yes, exactly. Buses are the place where the bullying is always worse. Okay. Always. Um, I actually biked to school for Ogilvy because of that. Wow. Um, I mean, it wasn't that far, but... Yeah. But we couldn't bike to Mora. It was too far from our house. So we would wait at the after school. We would wait after school at the library for my mom to come pick us up because the library was walking distance. And that was so much fun. The library was so much fun. The librarians were even like supportive and I could, I didn't think about it a lot because um, being queer because of my family has always kind of been like background noise most mm -hmm. of the time. It's just, it's there. Yeah, yeah. I'm, it's been I'm normal. Queer. So I, my, my current crush is a girl. Uh-huh. Oh, well. I'm still not going to ask her. So you're talking about two things that were really important. And I think it's important for everybody to hear. Number one, you have a supportive family. Mm -hmm. And that is so protective and so important for kids. It is. So it's, you were blessed in that respect. And then... it's It's morbid, but... 
the only reason I'm alive is because I have a true blessing of a family. And that's real. I can see it and hear it. And that's why it's so important for parents to know that it's a life or death thing. It is. To be able to support your kid. And I think that's something that doesn't always click with some parents is that with some kids, it's okay to just passively be like, okay, you're still not allowed to have sex. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And with other kids, you need to give them active and adamant support. Yes. And you have to keep track of that. It's not just that you, you're you a passive ally. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's okay to just be a passive ally of a parent. Mm-hmm. It, it sincerely depends on the kid and the, where the kid is. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes that is not enough to keep your kid healthy. And again, you have to look at, like, especially where they go to school. And then you had a school in Mora where you got to put your foot on the desk or whatever, and you were chastised for it. So there are some things about home and school. I, I'm one of those kids that tends to deny their own hardships. Um, cause well, denial can be useful. Yeah. Um, and I would, I kind of constantly tell myself, um, I've got a good family. I've got a good family, which means I have it good. And technically that isn't true. Mm. Um, I have a good family, but we're poor. Oh. And I have a good family, but we live in a poor area. And I have a good family, but kids at school on varying levels are cruel. Because you're poor. No, not because I'm, my current school, not because I'm poor. Everyone's poor at my current school, okay. which is a whole different rabbit hole. I live on a reservation right now. Okay. Um, Are you indigenous? Yeah. Uh, like a tiny fraction of me somewhere in there. My mom is a total mutt. She has literally everything on the face of the earth okay. in her. Okay. And, and I mean it. Okay. Like, obviously, she looks more European than anything else, but she is everything. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, but no, I live in a predominantly uh, uh, native area at the moment. Okay. Um which is really just the area I live in. The uh, the school I go to is currently like 92% Native American. There are okay. still some white kids. And um, sometimes Indigenous people have had a much more evolved view of queer or... Uh, they queer have the, the two-spirit. Yes, two-spirit. Um, as I understand it. And I haven't done like deep studies into like the actual my school actually provides multiple like indigenous culture classes okay. i have yet to take one okay. um because partially because covid and partially because um i have classes i would like to get to first mm-hmm. um because they are my priority or although i do plan on taking those classes eventually because it's an interesting topic to me yeah, yeah. i want yeah. to know yeah but um i forgot where i started um we were just talking no, about whether I just, or not you felt some acceptance because sometimes culturally there's been... Honestly, I think it... Like, yes, the idea that Native Americans have the two-spirit um, mm. contributes, but actually I think it's more marginalized groups see and accept other marginalized groups. Okay, so you feel accepted where you're at. Compared. More like it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Like kind of, kind of like with my family. Actually, uh-huh. it's background noise. Okay, it's it's there. It mm-hmm. exists. I guess that's a thing. That's part of me. But yeah, like this much of me. And you're not bullied. Not for that. Not for that. No, I'm not. I'm not actually very bullied here. Um, partially because of the culture of the school. Okay. Um, it's like a school full of quiet kids. Actually. Okay. Um. So I'm not really bullied. I was for a little bit, but it got shut down quickly enough when they realized that I'm not someone who's hurt by it. Um, but I just, I'm not bullied here. And um, honestly, most LGBTQ plus things in my school, it's kind of just passive. Like that person 
is bi, that mm-hmm. person is straight, that person is, it's just there. Um, like, even the other day, I had a friend who came out to me as non-binary, and the reaction was pretty much everyone being like, oh, what's what's your new name? <laughs> okay. So just roll with it. Yeah. yeah. They, they picked Alex for their new name. And I told them it wasn't allowed. And I and I sat them down and I went through a bunch of non-binary names with them. Okay. That Alex isn't allowed. Too many people do Alex. Um, which was fun, actually. But like at my current school, that's the general reaction is is I'm bi. Okay. Cool. Yeah. We have fun anymore? So we have just a few minutes left. And I would love for you to share your experience with maybe your peers who are watching out there. You know, what advice would you have? What wisdom would you have? What Um, what would you like them to know that could be helpful for them in their journeys? So I don't really like when most adults say what other people think doesn't matter because I have never believed that's true. Okay. Even when my parents tell me it. (laughs) What other people your parents think? Right now. Yeah, yeah. What other people think? Yeah. Does matter. But not what everyone thinks. Okay. Matters. It matters what the good people think. And you can tell they're good when they're willing to hear everyone. You It doesn't matter what the people with closed ears think of you. Because they don't, they don't take in the world as it is. They don't, um, really they're just, they're blind. Mm -hmm. And when they're blind, that means they don't see who and what you are for who and how you are. And they don't accept it because they're blind. They sit there with closed ears and closed minds. And it doesn't matter what they think. But it does matter what people with open ears and open minds and open eyes think. Mm -hmm. Because those people will learn and think and understand the world. And then they will see you and see the flaws that matter. Like, it's not a flaw that you're trans, but it, it is a flaw how you talk about this thing. Or how you behave. So they level with you. Yeah. And they give you feedback in a way that helps. But yeah, like, yeah. don't don't say what people think doesn't matter, because if what people thought didn't matter, then I don't need to bother working on shutting myself up so that another person gets to speak. Because what they yeah, think doesn't yeah. matter, what I think matters. Yeah. What they think doesn't matter. So I don't need to, I don't need to learn to quiet down. I don't need to learn to let the other person's, but that's not true. I do need to figure out how to sit and be silent and allow another person to speak. That is an important part of being a decent person. So what matters what other people think, it just doesn't matter what everyone thinks. And that's worth writing down on a bumper sticker and pasting it up all over the place. So we're coming down the home stretch. You got your own bumper sticker. It'll be at the next Because Conference. Serious? Yeah. And we can do that. Or somebody can. But we need to say goodbye. Okay. But thank you so much for your courage, your grit, your willingness to share your story. Because it makes a difference and you make a difference. So would you join us in our signature goodbye? Yes. Which is? Bye for now. now.